yeah thank you very much for joining so <clears throat> today we'll be discussing from chapter 7 uh, indra offends the spiritual master brahaspati the devatas accept vishwarupa as their guru so in the previous chapter we saw how by lord brahma's request Daksha Prajapati, after having lost his uh, 10,000 sons, Haryashwas, and 1,000 sons, Savalashwas, because of the preaching of Nardamuni, and then after having cursed Nardamuni for what he had done, not to stay at one place, continuously roam all over. Then Brahma comes and kind of pacifies Daksha and in, indirectly tells that, okay, you beget daughters, not sons, so that Narada Muni will not disturb you. So Daksha Prajapati begot 60 daughters. Out of 60, he had given uh, 10 daughters in marriage to Dharma, Aryamaraj, and then uh, 27 daughters to Moon God, and then few daughters to different personalities but 17 daughters to our kashyapa muni so the whole previous chapter was talking about who are the children of these daughters along with their husbands whom they begot so the children of uh, dharma were mentioned the children of bruta krashava and angirasa are mentioned and the moon god has no children, that is also mentioned. And Kashyapa, who married 17, out of 17, initially 4 were married to Kashyapa and then eventually 13 were married. Or we can say, first 13 were married and later on, when 4 daughters were remained to Daksha and he was looking for a proper bride and then he thought Kashyapa would be suitable match. So he again gave the 4 remaining 4 to Kashyapa only. So in any case, 17 were married to Kashyapa. So of which, the first four daughters who are married to Kashyapa, their children are mentioned, the simple children. And then from the remaining 13 daughters, about four or five daughters' children are mentioned in this chapter. And while mentioning about their children, there was a mention about, uh, there was one daughter. Her name is uh, uh, sorry. After mentioning, I mean, of course, in one sense, there was mention about all the daughters of Diti, uh, the, all the daughters of Diti, except one daughter, uh, except one or two daughters, that is Diti. Uh, Danu also was mentioned. Diti was not mentioned. Before Diti, Aditi's discussion is going on. Only one daughter remained is Diti. Diti's thing will be mentioned in the last chapter. Uh, last chapter is all about um, Diti, the 17th and 18th chapter. Or 18th and 19th chapter. So then Aditi had a total how many? 12 children, 12 sons. Of the 12 sons, the first four sons are described in this chapter. And the remaining eight sons will be described in the seven, 18th chapter. And then Aditi, who had two children, that will be described and then followed by what happened, that also will be described in the 18th chapter. So of these uh, four... Uh, Adityas, the fourth one was uh, first one was Surya, second one was Arima, the third one was Pusha, the fourth one was uh, Tasta. So Tasta married Rachana. Rachana is coming from the lineage of Asuras. So why it happened so? We don't know. Somehow the father of Rachana. Somehow he must have pleaded Tvasta to marry his daughter. So Tvasta either accepted willingly or had to accept because he was asked for some favor or help or charity, something like that. So in any case, he married Rachna. So Rachna, he got two sons. One was Sanyavesa and second one Vishwarupa. So at one point of time, the Devatas were rejected by Draspati. One second, one second, Mataji. Your voice at is one not... Point, Voice is not audible? Yeah, in between it is very feeble. Now? Now it is okay. Now? Oh, okay. So out of the two sons, Sannivesha and Vishwarupa, 
at one point of time because of some reason Brahaspati kind of rejected Devatas as being his disciples. Devatas were in difficult situation. Then the Devatas accepted Vishwarupa. So that is what is mentioned in the last verse. And that produced a lot of queries in the heart of Parikshit Maharaj. And this chapter and the following chapters will be answered to that question asked by Parikshit Maharaj. So that is the connection. The 17th chapter describes how the Devatas abandoned by their Guru Brahaspati and defeated by the Daityas accepted Vishwarupa as their Guru on the advice of Lord Brahma. So these are, this is the theme of this entire chapter. So currently we are in this section of chapter 7 to 9, the story of Vishwarupa, the son of the daughter of Daksha. So he is the grandson of Daksha. Daksha's daughter is Aditi. Aditi's son is uh, Thvashta, Thvashta's son is Vishwarupa and Vishwarupa's story is mentioned in 7-8-9 chapters. So like that. The next later on we will see Vishwarupa, Sura, then Kishichar Ketu and then uh, others, Adityas, etc. So this chapter contains 40 verses and we will see how Indra fails to respect Braspati and as a result of that what happens to Indra, then what kind of corrective measures Indra took and uh, what are those things that will be coming further? So to start with, first verse. Sri Rajo Vacha. Sri Rajo Vacha. Okay. Kasaheto Parityakta. Kasaheto Parityakta. Achari Natmana Sura Achari Natmana Suraham Etad Achakshwa Bhagavan Etad Achakshwa Bhagavan Chisya Nam Akramam Guru Chisya Nam Akramam Guru Maharaj Parikshit inquired from Shukadev Goswami, O oh, great sage. Why did the spiritual master of the demigods, Brahaspati, reject the demigods who were his own disciples? What offense did the demigods commit against their spiritual master? Please describe to me this incident. Yeah. So Parishit Maharaj, having heard, is actually making an inquiry about why and what. So that is the indication here. So Maharaj Paris is asking that, Oh great sage, why did Brihaspati reject the Devatas? Please describe the offense the Devatas committed to their Guru. So that is the question. So what was that offense that Devatas performed as a result of that Brihaspati rejected them completely? This generally does not happen like this, but I am going to be something serious. Why did Brihaspati reject the Devatas? Who were his disciples? The Guru is rejecting his disciples, means disciple must have done something very great mistake. So that was the question. So before entering into the answer, which Sikadeva Goswami will speak from the second shloka onwards, I just want to give some connection. Where are we in the sequence of past times? So all these details I have mentioned in the book, which we recently published. The book name was uh, Bhagavat Tavichar. So in order to understand the chronology of the events of events that are happening in the Bhagavatam. If you see, in the second and third cantos, we study creation, Lord Vishnu's creation and Brahma's creation, etc. etc. And after Brahma's creation completed, Brahma's creation completes with the appearance of Swayambhuva Manu and Satarupa. I, by the request of Swayambhu and Sadhurupa, Lord Brahma prays to Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu appears as Lord Varaha and lifted the Bhumandala. Just last week we only had uh, this Varaha Dvadashi celebration. Not last week, this week only, I suppose, two days back. So Lord Varaha appeared and lifted the Bhumandala. Then Swayambhu Manu was made the king of the entire Bhumandala. So in his tenure during the Swayambhu Manu Mantra, initially Swayambhu Manu ruled over the Bhumandala. After him, Uttanapada, Dhruva, and Dhruva's children eventually Ve Anga, 
Vena, Prutu, and few more children, then Prachina Barhi, ten Prachetas, and then finally Daksha supposed to become the king. Daksha did not become the king. Then Swayambhumanu went to the Gurukula of Nardamuni and brought Priyavrata back home to become the king. So then Priyavrata became the king. After Priyavrata, Agnidra, then Nabi, then Rushabadev, then Bharata Maharaj, then Sumati, and then so many people in the lineage of Bharat Maharaj, such as Vairaja and so many things, etc. So like that, the different kings who ruled over the entire Bhumandala during the region of Sanam Bhumanantara were explained all the way up to chapter 15 of 5th Canto. That's with that way, Vayam Bhumanantara is completed. Then Bhagavatam directly jumps into 6th Manantara. So what happened during the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th? There is no discussion about that. Of course, later in the canto, there is a brief mention of which kind of avatara appeared as a manvantara avatara during those manvantara periods. And who was the Indra, who was the Manu, such kind of only names are given, but not the past times so much. Now, we have come to the past times of Chakshusha Manvantara. The midway of Chakshusha Manvantara we have arrived. So after completing Swambo Manvantara, Second, third, fourth, fifth, and in the sixth also started. We are in the middle of the sixth manvantara. When the middle of the sixth manvantara was going on, that time the ruler of the Bhumandala was King Sat. So one day King Satyavrata went to the ocean to offer morning oblations, ocean or river or pond, whatever you can say. And there the Lord appears to him in the form of a small fish. And the Lord reveals, So, my dear king, please save me. And then eventually, my dear king, in upcoming seven days, seventh day from today will be, there will be a huge rain. As a result of that, Bhuloka, Bhuvarloka, Sargaloka, Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Talatala, Mahatala, Rasatala, Patala, Lokas will all be destroyed. But in order to save you, I will send a boat and aboard the boat with the important people, important living entities, important food grains and all, I will save all of you. So like that, Lord Master saved some of the important people. But every other living entity in the Swarga Loka, Bhur Loka, Bhu Loka and seven Billa Swargas are all destroyed. By the way, the entire Bhumandala also fell into Garbhodaka Ocean. Completely fell into Garbhodaka Ocean. So then, again, by the request of the Supreme Lord, no, no, by the request of the devatas, uh, then what happened? Not immediately. So, Brahma actually goes to a small power nap during this pralaya. As soon as he got up, more than half the universe is completely isolated, completely vacant, completely destroyed, almost. So, Brahma was in worry. Again, I have to recreate his double task. I cannot do, just now I did. So, he was looking around. Daksha. Starting from the middle of the first Manvantara till now, he was actually performing tapasya to regain his virtual position at the Prajapati, the son of Brahma. So now Brahma directly went to Daksha and requested Daksha, my dear Daksha, now ten lokas have, be, have become beingless. We need to populate all these ten lokas with different variety of living entities. So Daksha said, okay. Whatever you say, I will follow your instructions. And initially, Daksha was begetting the living entities through his mystic potency. But not nothing much happening. Then he went to Himindya mountains, performed severe tapasya by chanting Gamsaguya prayers. Then Lord Vishnu appeared and Lord Vishnu told, okay, through his mystic potency, you will not beget more children at one go. You marry Marisha. And through her, you will beget more children. So Daksha Prajapati married to Marisha. Marisha, Rashikna, I don't remember what is her name. So he married her. Through her, first of all, he got 10,000 children, sent them to Gurukul to study and learn everything and come back. Nardamuni sent them to Vanaprasadar and to the forest. Daksha felt sorry. Then again, he got 1,000 children, sent them to Gurukul. Nardamuni delivered them also. Daksha became very angry and cursed Nardamuni. Then Daksha got 60 daughters. Who because through, through whom? Uh, he was able to populate the entire uh, universe. So Daksha married Ashikni. So first 10,000, then 1,000, then 60 daughters. 
So of 60, 10 were given to Yama, 27 were given to Soma. So through Yama begot Vera Devatas, Soma could not be getting the children. And 17 were given to Kashyapa. And uh, remaining were given to different sages. Angirasa 2, Krashava 2, and Bhuta 2. It was like that. I did not put the details, but overall that way. And then Kashyapa gave birth. Kashyapa 17 wives gave birth to different children. So among them, currently we are discussing about. Currently we are discussing about. Aditi's children. Aditi herself gave birth to 12 children, 12 sons. Among the 12 sons, among the 12 sons, one was Aryama. And Aryama gave birth to children who are like human beings, who have the aptitude of like, uh, like that of human beings, and Brahma made them as human beings. When the human beings were produced, they need to stay on the Buloka. But Buloka is still in the Garbhadaka ocean. During the Pralaya, it fell into Garbhadaka ocean. Now it has to be lifted up. Then the Devatas and the great sages, <coughs> headed by Kashyapa, Prajapati and all, pray to Lord Vishnu. So Lord Vishnu again appeared as Nila Varaha. And as he was lifting the Bhumandala, at one side he is lifting the Bhumandala. On the other side, Kashyapa's another wife, Diti. One day she insisted Kashyapa that I need to have children immediately. Even though Kashyapa told this is the evening time during Sandhya time, it is not right to be good children. You wait till night. We'll do the little. She said, no way. Right now I want children. So as a result of that, she gave birth to two children, Hiranya Kashyapu and Hiranyaksha. And Hiranyaksha conquered Indra. He went in all directions and trying to find out an equal match. And he came to Lord Varaha, who was lifting the Bhumandala. And he was delivered by Lord Varaha. And Lord Varaha lifted the Bhumandala and the human beings who were born from Maryama were living there happily. But then later on we study in the seventh canto that hearing the death of Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashapu performs severe austerities to become immortal and also to kill, to take the revenge against the death of his younger brother. But eventually he was killed by or he was delivered by Lord uh, Narsimha Deva. Who will enthrone Pralad Maharaj as the king of the entire uh, universe, the three, three planetary systems, Buloka, Borloka, Sargaloka? But Pralad Maharaj, being a honest and genuine person, he gives back the heaven to Indra. So Indra becomes the ruler of the heaven, and Pralad becomes the heaven of the Pilas Fargas, the lower planetary systems. So then, since Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu were killed by uh, Lord Vishnu, in order to favor Indra, Diti became very angry. Diti wanted to beget a son who can kill Indra. So she began to perform Pumshona sacrifice. But because of the intervention of Kashyapa, Diti gave about to 49 sons who later on became Devatas. 49 Marus. That's how her story is being mentioned in the end of the sixth canto. So now, Prahlad Maharaj ruled over the Bilas Vargas for some time. After Prahlad Maharaj, his son Virochana was began to rule over the Bilaswargas. As Bilaswargas were ruled over by Virochana, that time Asuras came to him and told, actually, you know, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu were the rulers of the entire heaven. Even the heaven belongs to your father, Prahlad. And Prahlad, out of charity, he has given to Indra, and Indra is boosting a lot now. Actually, heaven belongs to you. So Virochana went and attacked him. Indra and defeated Indra and he occupied and Sarga, occupied the throne of Sarga. So at one point of time, all the devatas took the shape of, took the dressing of a Brahmana, different Brahmanas. And they approached Virochana for some charity. So Virochana is a Dharma one. He said, okay, what charity you want? They said, we want your head. Hmm? So Virochana cut off his head and gave to Indra and others. So since Virochana died, Indra again became the king of heaven. So during this time, Indra had a small son, Pali, who was studying in the school. So, so then, eventually when Pali became completed his Gurukula education, when he became youthful and when he came home, all his uncles told, your father was killed by the devatas in an unrighteous way. He should take 
revenge for that. Then Bali immediately waged war against Swarga and defeated Indra, and he began to sit on the throne of heaven. Then Devatas all go to Lord Vishnu. They pray to Lord Vishnu, saying everything. This is this is the time like this. So Lord Vishnu says, "No, I cannot do anything. Now the Suras are more powerful. So you make a uh, truce with them. That is the only way you can come out of this miserable condition. Make a truce with them and change the milk ocean. I'll help you to drink the nectar by which you become more powerful and eventually you can defeat the Asuras. So during this time, Lord appeared as Ajita. Lord appeared as Kurma. Lord appeared as uh, Danvantri. Lord appeared as Mohini. And finally, Lord made. Only the devatas will be get nectar. And finally, the devatas and asuras began to fight with each other. In that fight, the devatas defeated the asuras utterly, very easily because they drank nectar. They are more confident now. And when they are about to kill the asuras, Narudmani came and stopped the devatas. Say, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. You defeated. That is fine. You lose them. So Narada told the remaining surviving asuras that take all the people to Shukracharya. So, following the advice of Narada Muni, the asuras, the non-injured asuras carried injured asuras, the other non-injured asuras called uh, the mutilated uh, asuras, and all of them went to Shukracharya. And Shukracharya revives all of them, even those who are dead, those who are injured, he revives them and makes them healthy by giving them a special kind of nectar, a special kind of beverage. And Bali became very much grateful to Kashyapa for what he, uh, not Kashyapa, very much grateful to uh, Shukracharya for what he had done. Then Shukra, he accepted Shukracharya as his guru and uh, accepted his shiksha and under, his, under the shelter of Shukracharya, he was studying the Vedic literature and so many things he was doing, was also performing various sacrifices to become more and more powerful, like so many things are happening. By the way, while all these things are happening, Indra was ruling over heaven and uh, Shukracharya's ashram is filled with uh, asuras. The sixth Manvantara was just completed. And then the seventh Manvantara began. Because Indra and all other devatas who just drank nectar and they became so powerful and they now they are the rulers of the entire heaven and they became proud of their facilities, proud of their opulences. So because of that pride, at one day, when there is a dance concert was going on in Indra's Sabha, Indra was completely immersed in observing the dance performances, etc. Brahaspati suddenly entered. So since Brahaspati, the guru of Indra and other devatas, none of the devatas added by Indra did not get up to receive Brahaspati. So one reason is that whether king or uh, brahmana sitting on the Vyasasana, no need to get up in between. But other reason, when somebody superior is coming, one should get up. There is a confusion. So Indra did not get up. So Dhrushpati came and waited for, waited for some time, hoping that Indra will receive him, but Indra did not receive. And Dhrushpati went back to his home. And Dhrushpati completely dis uh, disappeared. So he understood that, okay, Indra will come to his senses, and he will come to beg forgiveness from me, but I don't want to. So, Brahaspati completely disappeared. Oh, Indra realized what his mistake is, and I uh, came to Brahaspati's home to beg forgiveness. But Brahaspati was not there. Suddenly, understand? Brahaspati rejected the Devatas. Sukracharya sent Bali to wage war against the Devatas. So, immediately, the Asuras very easily defeat the Devatas. And Devatas became shelterless. They went to Brahma. They requested Brahma, please tell us what to do. Brahma initially asked them, you made a big mistake. What is this? Don't do like this. So since Brahaspati will not come back for some time, he feels very bad for some time. Till then, you accept Vishwarupa as your priest. And Vishwarupa will help you to regain your kingdom. He will help you how to uh, fight with the Asuras and regain it. Similarly, as it is said by Brahma, Vishwarupa gets uh, Shurupa empowers Indra with Narayana Kavach, Narayana Asura. So with that, Indra defeated the Asuras and Indra becomes the king of the heaven once again. So then, 
So Vishurupa is continuing as the priest of the Devatas, but Vishurupa is the he is the father is Devata, his mother is Asura. At one point of time, Vishurupa while performing Ignya, he was offering obeisances for the welfare of the Devatas, and he is also offering obeisances for the welfare of the Asuras. So when Indra came to know this, he became very angry, suddenly came and cut off the head of Vishurupa. And Indra did some atonement for that mistake of killing a Brahmana. But in any case, since Indra cut off the head of Vishwarupa and killed him, Vishwarupa's father Tasta became very angry. And Tasta performed a sacrifice from which there appeared a Asura known as Rutra Asura. This Rutra Asura was King Chitraki. He was actually he was a king during that time with Chitraketu. Because he did not have any children, he wanted to get children, he got, he got married to so many ladies, but he did not get children. Eventually, Angira blessed him to be the child as a Shoga, and the child died untimely because of the envious feelings of the poor wives who applied poison to him. So then, when he was feeling so much sorry for the loss of death, for the loss of his child, Ashishoka, the Devatas and elderly people came and uh, not Devadas. Angir Rishi and Narodamuni came and uh, indicated to Chitraketu what is this? Do you understand about Atman Jnana? So he understood then being initiated to Narodamuni because... Then voice has gone down. Okay, okay, sir. So King Chitraketu understood the reality of this material world. Then he accepted Narodamuni as his guru and he went to Vindya Mountains, performed severe astralities, became the king of Vidyadharas. And after he had also darshan of Lord Sankarshana. Lord Sankarshana told, okay, sometime you relish because you wanted to continue in this material world as the king. The king of the Lord made him king of Vidyadharas and continue for something, come to spiritual world. So he continued for one lakh years as the king of Vidyadharas. He's never going to spiritual world. So Lord orchestrated that Mother Parvati will curse Chitraketu. And Chitraketu was cursed to become a Asura. So now when Tvashta was performing the sacrifice, in order to take the revenge against Indra, who killed his own son, uh, his son Vishwarupa. So that King Chitraketu appeared as Urutra Asura. Then there was a fight between uh, Urutra Asura and Devatas. And the Devatas were initially defeated. They approached Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu tells, Please go and ask the backbone of Dadichi Muni. From that, you make one uh, Vajrayuda, which will kill Uttarasura. So, Indra did everything as it is, and then eventually killed Uttarasura. And Uttarasura was delivered and went back to Godhead. That was King Chitraketu Maharaj. And Indra again became the king of heaven. That is there. So, when uh, Indra defeated Indra defeated Vritrasura and Dikki became the king of the heaven and he was like again again faring well. During that time, Ali Maharaj was already was saved by Shukracharya who was studying under Shukracharya. He became like good enough, knowledgeable enough. Then Shukracharya performed a special sacrifice known as Vishwaji Sakrigna. After Vishwaji Chignya, Ali Maharaj again waged war against Swarga and defeated Indra very quickly, and Indra went away, fled away in all different directions. So, when Indra was without any shelter, Aditi felt so much compassion for Indra. She approached her husband Kashyapa, please do, do something. And Kashyapa told her to perform Payavrata. As a result of that, Lord Vamana appeared the son of Aditi and Kashyapa. And that Vamana going to, of course, when Devatas were out of reach, Shukracharya, in order to make Balimara the king of the heaven for the entire Manvantara, he told Balimara to perform 100 and 100 Yajnas. So 99 Yajnas were completed when the 100th one started. Aditi really felt very sorry that if Bali becomes the king of heaven, my son will never be continued as a king of heaven. What is this going to happen? So eventually feeling so much concern for her son, uh, She performed Payavrata and as a result of that, Lord Vamana appeared as, a, as her child and he went to Bali Maharaj under sacrifice, asked for three pairs of land 
with one pace he occupied the entire bhumandala the one of the systems the second uh, step he occupied bhor loka sarga loka mahar loka jana loka tap loka satya loka and he also passed the entrance of ganga into our universe and then at the third step he accepted bali maharaj bali maharaj head and he told if you want to become indra you can become indra during the eighth manvantara but not now till then you stay in sutra loka in a specially constructed apartment business so these are the different stories that were happening in the heaven during the sixth manvantara seventh manvantara heaven and earth and there etc so currently we are at this point of time After Samudra Mantan episode, when Indra and other devotees drank nectar and they became so powerful, they defeated the asuras very quickly, very easily. They are almost to about to extinct. I think uh, that time, because Indra just now drank a number of and he has become so powerful and he has become so wealthy, and asuras are all asuras are almost dead. But they were saved by Shukracharya again. They were revived. It took a lot of time. So Indra thought. the most powerful one can can in fact happen so this pride the pride of power the pride of good fortune the pride of uh, appliances will blind a person so in that blindness one starts disrespecting one spiritual master also one's guru also so that is what happened here that is what is being uh, talked about and afterwards what all happened we have briefly mentioned that is all mentioned in the 6th canto 7th canto 8th canto 3rd canto talks about all these past times what we just briefly mentioned in the 7th one so with that little background let us begin uh, today's chapter very uh, big and interesting so before getting in any questions yes prabhuji uh, prabhuji like you mentioned about the uh, varahadev appearance neel varaha so whatever varahadev mm. past time we studied that was in the middle of the uh, chakshusha manantara that is how yes and then it, it was mentioned that due to the pralaya the bhumandala had gone to garbhoda koshan so whether it was due to the pralaya or due to hiranyaksha the hiranyaksha put the garbhoda uh, bhumandala down in the garbhoda see of course what you are saying is what we read in the first canto third chapter when lord varaha avatar past times are mentioned it is said like that many people bhagavat katha kar also say like that but at least from bhagavatam shloka's point of view we don't see that kind of activity happening by hiranyaksha anywhere because hiranyaksha hiranyakashipu were the kind of lost children the children born to kashyapa at the end At the end means okay. at the end of Chakshu Jamandar. Ah no, no, not like that. At the end means after begetting all other children, these children were born. Okay. So in that sense. So but in the meantime, Aditi gave birth to uh, twelve Adityas. One among them was Aryama. Aryama already begot uh, human beings, and then human beings were required the place to stay. They were thus prayed to Lord Vishnu, and Lord Vishnu was. trying to lift the bhumandala so there is no mention of hiranyaksha throwing down the bhumandala into water at least in the bhagavatam shloka as per se maybe in other puranas we don't know but in any case bhagavatam says that during the pralaya three lokas will be completely destroyed that is clearly mentioned in the 8th canto 24th chapter lord masya's incarnation so i always tell this thing in the cosmology presentations so during this pralaya and during this pralaya which indicated by lord masya The bhumandala fell into garbhada kavasham, and then eventually after that only Daksha was requested to revive these ten lokas with their living entities. And Daksha was doing one by one, one by one. So bhumandala was supposed to be lifted, and it was lifted from this thing. But Hiranyaksha throwing it into the water, there is no shloka mentioning that. Okay, so then that means the fight between Varadev and Hiranyaksha. happened just because hiranyaksha wanted to fight with someone and it was also lord vishnu's desire to uh, yeah hiranyaksha. that they are all there but from other point of view since hiranyaksha defeated indra by defeating indra you have become the king of heaven that means everything in the universe is yours so here yes. varaha one person is lifting and stealing some of his property 
So since everything belongs to him and somebody else is coming and stealing his property, so he will buy. He will, he will obviously will fight. That's how the fight started. Okay, because in third canto we studied no provision like he went to Varuna because he wanted to fight with somebody and he was trying See, to. That, that is there. That is there. That is there. That is they are all there. They are all background reasons. The fight, desire to fight is there, and so many things are there. Also there, there are the reasons. But because since we are focusing on one aspect of the past time, so from this point of view, let's see like this. Since ah uh, we are the kings of the heaven, everything belongs to us in this universe. How dare you to take our property? So like that. Okay, okay. And Prabhuji, one more thing, like uh, you mentioned about uh, Prahlad Maharaj, he took the um, kingdom of the lower planetary system, like lower seven lokas. And mm -hmm. uh, the thing was uh, upper planetary system was given to Indra like that. So like mm -hmm. where was the Hiranyakashipu's kingdom? Because uh, after Hiranyakashipu's death, he uh, Prahlad inherited that thing. Na? And uh, it, it was mentioned that uh, Narsingadev crowned the Prahlad Maharaj as the king of that kingdom. So that was mm. in the on Buloka because in Ahobilam just now I had visited. Uh, uh, it was I saw that it means it is termed as Hiranyakashipu's palace and it was 186 storied and like that. So means where it was exactly because this thing we also witnessed on Buma or but uh, very recently we discussed all these things in our fifth canto. Uh, we, we recently only a few couple of months back only we discussed in the fifth canto. This entire oh. past tense that we study in the seventh canto is all happening in the heaven, not in Ahobilam. Oh. Hmm. So th that means here the understanding is in spite of uh, Prahlad Maharaj having the kingdom of uh, heaven as his own or whatever the Hiranya, Hiranya has uh, acquired from the um, Devatas, still he accepted out of his humility the lower planetary system like that. See, since Prahlad Maharaj born in the Asura community, though Brahmaji made him as the king of the heaven also, but uh, Prahlad Maharaj not so much after power and all these things. He told Indraji, you are the lord of the heaven and you will be the heaven and I will take care of the Asura Lokas. The seven Lokas are the Asura Lokas, so he became the king of the seven Asura Lokas. And that also did not rule for a long time. As soon as his son became youth and he made his son as the king and then he went to forest. Prahlad Maharaj is not about power, man, power hungry. He is not so much interested in power hungry. He was into deity, Lord yeah. Sarship. Okay. So he went back, means after giving his kingdom to his sons, he went back to forest. Means now also we studied, na, he is in Hari Varsha still uh, worshipping. Ah. So that now that is a forest for him. Hari Varsha is his forest. Okay. 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 Thank you. Other devotees, any questions? No, Prabhuji, thank you. Okay. So if there are no questions, we'll go ahead with the next is a big group of verses. Let us read. Sri Badarayani Ruvacha. Sri Badarayani Ruvacha. Indra Stribhuvan Aishwarya. Indra Stribhuvan Aishwarya. Madhur Langita Sap. Satpata Madulangita Satpata Marubir was to be Rudrair Marubir was to be Rudrair Adite Rubir Rupa Adite Rubir Rupa Vishwa Devaisha Satyascha Vishwa Devaisha Satyascha Na Satya Bhyam Parishrita Na Satya Bhyam Parishrita Siddha Charana Gandharvair Siddha Charana Gandharvair Muni Bheer Brahma Vadi Bhi Muni Bheer Brahma Vadi Bhi Vidyadharapsara Sobhishcha Vidya Dharapsa Rupishcha Kinnarai Patagoragai 
पांडूरे नातपत्रे ना चामराव्यजनादि विराजमाना पौलम्या विराजमाना पौलम्या सहार दासय नायब शय नया वृषम सहार दास नया वृषम सायदा परमा परमाचार्यम सायदा परमाचार्यम वाचस्पति मुनिवर वाचस्पति मुनिवर सुरासुर नमस्कृत सुरासुर नमस्कृत पश्यन अपी स भागत पश्यन अपी स भागत Shukadev Goswami said, "O King, once upon a time, the King of Heaven, Indra, being extremely proud because of his great opulence of the three worlds, transgressed the law of Vedic etiquette. Seated on his throne, he was surrounded by the Marutas, Vasus, Rudras, Adityas, Ribhus, Vishvedevas, Sadhyas, Ashwini Kumaras, Siddhas, Charanas." Gandharvas and by great saintly persons. Also surrounding him were the Vidyadharas, Apsaras, Kinnaras, Patangas, the birds, the Urugas, the snakes. All of them were offering Indra their respects and services. And the Apsaras and Gandharvas were dancing and singing with very sweet musical instruments. Over Indra's head was a white umbrella as effulgent as the full moon. fanned by yak tail wisp and served with all the paraphernalia of a great king indra was sitting with his wife sachi devi who occupied half the throne when the great sage brihaspati appeared in that assembly brihaspati the best of the sages was the spiritual master of indra and the demigods uh, and the demigods and was respected by the demigods and demigod demons alike nevertheless although indra saw his spiritual master before him he did not raise from his own seat or offer a seat to his spiritual master nor did indra offer him a respectful welcome indra did nothing to show him respect this is a big section it was So here, so the question is saying that, O oh King, one day at the beginning of the seventh month mantra, because just now, some time back, only Samudra mantra episode was over, and Devatas drank and everything. So they fought with the Asuras very easily, very quickly. In no time, they defeated the Asuras. That actually increased their pride. 
increased their uh, uh, what you can say of course pride only their pride upon their strength etc etc so then they have become the king of the heaven they thought that now no asura can dare to come again to stand in the palace they are so powerful so unconquerable now no one can challenge us so with that understanding here indra the king of the heaven king of the devatas depicts that mentality of all the devatas o king once indra being extremely proud because of his great wealth in the three worlds transgressed the law of vedic conduct what kind of vedic conduct he transgressed one day seated on his throne he was surrounded by the maruts vasus rudras adityas rubus vishvadevas sadyas ashwini kumaras while being praised and worshiped by the siddhas charanas and gandharvas the sages who were novars of brahman vidyadharas apsaras kinnaras patangas and uragas with sweet singing so basically all the different variety of devatas are there and every in the midst of everyone there is a lot of singing and dancing was going on and everyone was completely absorbed in that over indra's head was a white umbrella as effulgent as the full moon fanned by actail whisks and served with all perfume indra was sitting with his wife sakhi devi who occupied half the throne and at that time brahaspati came in and indra did not welcome the great sage brahaspati the best of the sages the guru of indra and other devatas so he was respected by the other devatas and by the demons when he arrived by their rising and offering a seat so when brahaspati came in the rest of the assembly kind of got up but indra did not get up just like in the fourth canto we saw that when daksha came in everyone got up except lord brahma and lord shiva same way it seemed that now you accept uh, indra and sakshinath sakshi devi remaining all got up apparently seems to be like that indra did not get up so why indra did not get up we, we will talk about the reason later on but right now we don't know so instead of speculating let us simply say he did not get up why we don't know so brahaspati the best of the sages the guru of the indra and other devatas though he was respected by other devatas and by the demons when he arrived by the rising and offering a seat indra did not rise from his seat on seeing brahaspati enter the assembly indra one may think that okay indra did not see that's why he did not get up no indra saw brahaspati coming in but still he did not get up so this is the transgression of vedic conduct these verses are connected with the next verse the next verse also will talk about the same thing when indra did not welcome brahaspati brahaspati the acharya left and went to his own home because indra did not get up and welcome him though there was a seat dedicated for uh, brahaspati but brahaspati did not sit on that throw on that seat which was meant for him even though that was a vacant because indra himself did not get up and escorted me to the chair so brahaspati felt bad for this neglect of indra and returned to his own home asta nadya anartita nar nas nashrita means he was sitting on his throne in that assembly astana adhya asana ashrita sitting with sachi who shared of his seat he was served by the insignia of royalty indra did not rise he is mentioned twice to make clear his offense so this thing is mentioned two times though everyone got up indra did not get up and indra himself did not get up and received the guru he did not move at all though seated on his throne indra did not move here and there he was he continued to sit on the throne there is reason, reason for this maybe couple of verses later we will discuss about it but in any case while reading through this particular verse the different variety of devatas so we always hear about 33 crore devata 33 crore devatas many devotees sometimes send a messages here and there etc etc 
So some say that there are 33 principal devatas and every principal devata had one crore servants. That's why there are 33 koti as well as 33 crore devatas. Koti means 13, 13 types. So in that we generally see that the 12 Adityas, 8 Vasus, 11 Rudras and 2 Ashwinis. That makes 33. And some say not like that. There are different variety of devata groups. But among them, 33 devata groups are very special groups. So from this verse, we get names. I try to put them in 33. Ah, one second, Madhuji. Yes, Madhuji. Couldn't hear your voice, Prabhuji. Suddenly it trailed off and then came on again. So just give me one minute. This thing will not happen. Now it will be clear. Hopefully. So as we generally hear about 33 crore devatas, which is indicated by some people as 33 principal type devatas. The late Vasus, 12 Adityas, and 11 Rudras, etc. And some say 33 crore devatas in total. So, how do we understand? So, I was thinking that so there are 33 crore devatas, but when we say 33 crore, t, so 33 important divisions of devatas the total number may be 3 crores or 33 crores we don't know but among all the devatas there could be many individuals also but there are 33 important groups because many times in the bhagavatam we come across these names i try to put them together from this verse and other places also so we know 12 adityas one group 11 rudras 8 vasus 2 ashwini kumaras 13 vishwadevas watnen marus rubus Sadhya, Siddha, Charana, Vidyandarva, Vidyadara, Apsara, Kinnara, Kimpurusha, Agni Devatas, Pitrus, Saptarushis, Prajapatis, Valakilyas, Kritikas, Big Devatas, Maurtikas, Samvastaras, Durugas, Niratis, Yamas. So like that, many times we get the names of different variety of Devatas like this. So if we clearly, if we remember other places if their names are mentioned maybe they may come to 33 types i got up to 26 so this is what i thought okay 33 important groups of the devatas that are there among the unlimited variety of devatas so like that Hare so now you are able to hear ah yes. can you go to previous slide Yeah, Prabhuji, here, whatever is been mentioned, uh, some of them are lesser devatas as they call. There's Valkyas and Dik devatas and uh, other, all these are actual devatas or lesser devatas. Ah, yes. Because everyone has some service. See, not necessarily like even in a government office, you can't have everyone the same level. There are some people superior, some people are middle, some people are in the lesser position also. That is always there. That, 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 that kind of thing is there in administration everywhere. Okay. Uh, hmm. But still we consider all of them under the category of Devata. That is how. Ah, yes. So we say that if somebody is working in a government office, we say he is a government office member. He may be the head, he may be middle, and he may be a pun also. He is a government office employee. But Prabhuji, these Gandharvas, Apsaras, and Kim, uh, Kimpurushas, all of them are considered as Devatas. Ah, yes, they are all Devatas. Gandhas, Aptarshis, and Prajapatis, and all these are Devatas. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. And See, what is... Yeah, oh, yeah. Devatas mean the Devatas also, others called Rupa Devatas. Some of them are called uh, Saptarushis. Saptarushis is also living along the Devatas in Devaloka only. And the main purpose of Devatas and all these great sages is all to help us out to live better in this world. So in that way. Okay. 
because means so i used to consider this pitras and all these are different uh, living entities because we studied now that eight kind of living entities brahma ji uh, produced so in that these uh, were mentioned na these kimpurshas and things like that ah in that may, all all of them are there except the asuras ek bhuta prata pichasha rakshas remaining all are there they are all superhuman beings some of them are principal devatas some of them may be upadevatas but still they are devatas okay. you cannot deny okay. them the being devatas okay so even though the those eight categories are there most of them are under the name devata hmm. Hmm. and what is meant by 3 by 49 agni devatas some places they say three types of agni devatas some places they say 49 agni devatas that's why i put both in the fourth count if you see some say three agni devatas okay. some say even if you go to any yagna they invite uh, three kinds of agni devatas at the beginning like that okay thank you uh, but in total there are 14 and there is one agni he had three sons and every son gave birth to three to 15 15 sons so 15 3 is a 45 and three their fathers 48 and one their grandfather 14 so, yeah. so in total it is said that there are 14 agni devatas who will supervise all the agni related activities okay I think somewhere this mention had come then during our studies. I don't remember properly, but somewhere either it was for Marutas or Agnis. I think. Thank It's you. It's okay. Correction. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Ah, one by one. Madhu, you ask. You ask. Ah, okay, Prabhu ji, I just uh, had a doubt regarding Ashwini Kumaras. so i'm not too sure uh, about their uh, you know identity because uh, kun i mean madri's two sons uh, are from ashwini kumaras right yes so is there any uh, mention of their uh, any past times or anything or they just like names are given no no in the previous chapter we saw about their parents also na the sun god married vadva and vadva gave birth to two ashwini kumaras and ashwini yeah, kumara that. some past time will also come maybe in one of the couple of chapters later some past time will come basically they are physicians for the heavenly abode physicians yeah ah they are the doctors ayurveda doctors yeah. for the entire heaven oh okay okay hmm. and that's it i just was asking and you mentioned hmm. that the rishis are also say, staying with the devatas you just now said that uh sat rishis saptarishi stay in deva loka only the remaining rishi stay in the mahar loka jan loka mandal but saptarishi uh-huh. stay in swarga loka only we saw saptarishi mandal also na in the bhagavatam yeah, yeah yeah okay thank you bro okay yeah shweta ganga mata ji ha it's not it it one of the devtas mentioned is durgas so durgas does uh-huh. it refer to the expansions of durga devi or uh see the durgas can be considered as assistants of durga devi so durga devi is there and she had so many female attendants so they are all called durgas and they all will assist her so in that way hmm. and yamas means the same thing yam yamraj ah, and his assistant those who assist yamraj is so in that point of in that way and who are these nirutis ah nirutis are one category of uh, they are actually yakshas but because they are actually wanted to some yakshas who wanted to serve the lord in some capacity and there are nirutis are one category of devatas and they have given they are accepted by brahma as the devatas and because they are willing to serve in some way so they have some service to do and nirutis and this samvartakas they are the clouds no prabhuji yeah they are the deities of the clouds okay just like for fire we have devatas for wind we have devatas for clouds there are seven devatas samvartakas thank you basically thank devatas you. are basically they are in charge for a particular function particular uh, activity so for every activity there are devatas who are in charge for that and these are some of the important activities and important devatas that's why their names are given Yes, Mataji. 
Prabhuji, just uh, while answering to uh, Radhika Matheja's question, you mentioned that this Ashwini Kumaras are the Vaidyas um, uh, or doctors for the heavenly abode. Yes. But like we see now in, uh, beyond the Prithvi Tala or beyond the Bhumandala, even Earth, there is no Janma Mrityu Jara Vyadi. So why they do require doctor? Yes, now we discuss now. After drinking Amurta, the Devata fought with Asuras and defeated them very easily. And most of the Asuras, some of them were died and some of them were mutilated, their bodily limbs. They were taken to Shukracharya. It was Shukracharya who rejuvenated them by making them to drink some particular elixir. So he was kind of helping them to recuperate. So Shukracharya is acting as the physician for the Asuras. And like that in the battle, sometimes the Devata's bodily limbs also gets mutilated. Yeah, yeah. So we need a physician. Physician oh, required yeah. for that. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Dev Devata's also have an architect. Asuras also have an architect, Mayadanava and Vishwakarma. So for every aspect, there is an in charge. Just like in our place also we have in charge for everything so like that because it is we have like this because it is there in the they were local also that right. yeah, thank you Kavir Angira Sa Prabhu Ayayo Swagraham Tushnim Ayayo Swagraham Tushnim Vidwan Sri Mada Vikriyam Vidwan Sri Mada Vikriyam Brahaspati knew everything that would happen in the future. Seeing Indra's transgression of etiquette, he completely understood that Indra was puffed up by his material opulence. Although able to curse Indra, he did not do so. Instead, he left the assembly and in silence returned to his home. Understanding that Indra's bad conduct had arisen from pride in his wealth, in his current position, current situation, the great sage Bhaspati, who knew the future and who could quickly allot punishment left the assembly silent and went home. Since Indra disrespected Bhraspati with his Guru, the Guru could have given instant punishment. But instead, for the offense that Indra is made, what is going to happen in the future, Bhraspati could understand it through a vision. So understanding that, so Indra will go through a hard way, he will learn through a hard way, so, but he thought that Indra should learn. If I am around, he might come. He might come to me and beg forgiveness. When I forgive, he will not get any corrective measures. So Indra should get some punishment. So, hoping that Brahaspati left from there. This is how a guru does not tolerate any impurities in the disciple. So, he teaches proper lesson to the disciple. So, he disappeared. So that Indra had to go through the corrective measure without fail. Sataha means from the assembly. Kavi means that he knew the future. Prabhu means that he was capable of giving punishment. Vida Vidwan means he knew the cause of Indra's disrespect. So Braspati knew everything because he is Vidwan, he is Kavi, and uh, he is Prabhu, he is master and everything. He has different attributes. And then, what happened? Tarhi eva prati buddhe buddhe indro. Tarhi eva prati buddhe indro. Guru helanam atmana. Guru helanam atmana. Garhayam asa sadasi. Garhayam asa sadasi. 
स्वयं आत्मा Realizing he had disrespected his spiritual master, he condemned himself in the presence of all the members of the assembly. So, Buraspati left the assembly of Indra. He went his home, and eventually, understanding what is supposed to happen to Indra, he also disappeared from his home because he thought Indra will come any time and beg forgiveness. If he begs for, if he asks for beg forgiveness, I will give. I will have to give. I should give actually. So, Brahmaspati does not want to take any chance. He wants that Indra should go through the correction properly. So he disappeared completely. So, but after Brahmaspati went back, then Indra realized Indra did not must not not have seen while Brahmaspati is going back. After Brahmaspati gone completely, Indra realized. Indra realizing that he had disrespected his guru, condemned himself in the presence of all the members of the assembly. Pratibuddhya means that recovering from his intoxication with wealth, he perceived that he had committed offence to Guru. When Guru went back, Indra realized, "Hey, really, what is this? What I am doing like this? I made a big mistake. He is my Guru. I should have got up." So something like that. So now, in the next ten verses, Indra actually criticizes or chastises himself. These things are mentioned in this section. So Indra says. अहोबतामयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक्रुतमयासाधुक
why a sane person should be attached to that kind of wealth which makes him demon like that is criticizing except me who else like that then he tells the third reason yaha parameshtam dishanam yaha parameshtam dishanam adi adi tishtanna kanchana adi tishtan na kanchana pratyutishte diti bruyur pratyutishte iti bruyur dharmam te na param viduhu dharmam te na param viduhu if a person says one who is situated on the exalted throne of a king should not stand up to show respect to another king or a brahmana it is to be understood that he does not know the superior religious principles so do say that the person sitting on the throne of brahma that means vyasasan or simhasan whichever should not rise for anyone do not know the highest dharma so indra is saying that the dharma shastra saras generally say that the king who sits on the throne the, the the person who sits on the throne of a king is like as good as lord vishnu so in front of lord vishnu whether one may be brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra everyone is lesser to him only so everyone should stood up stand up and he will sit that is a normal custom that means the king normally if he is not sitting on the vyasasana he would respect and offer obeisances and wash feet of the brahmana so all these things he will do but while he is sitting on the throne while he is sitting on the asan that of brahma okay throne of brahma means simhasan one no need to get up to receive anybody because one who sits is like the supreme lord vishnu same thing happens to daksha prajapati time also when daksha prajapati was under the assembly everyone got up but shiva did not get up and uh, aditya did not uh, brahma did not get up so daksha thought okay brahma is my father that is fine but shiva is my son in law he should get up so he should not get up so like that he was feeling at that time very bad and now indra is saying that why shastra will tell this kind of rules which put us in dilemma so when my guru came i don't know whether should i get up or not shastra one shastra instruction says that if you are sitting on the throne whoever may be in front of you should not get up the other injunction of shastra says that when guru comes in front of guru everything is nothing one should be subservient to one's guru so indra followed the first principle that's why he did not get up but guru disappointed so what kind of instruction the scriptures are giving like that is uh, telling anyone whoever made this sutra in the dharma shastras is actually does not know the highest dharma that's why he has given that kind of rule that when king is sitting on the throne he is as good as vishnu and whatever else has to be done will be done in front of him so like that it's not good but question is but do not do not the knowers of nidhi shastra say that the king on the throne should not rise for anyone so indra said they are actually mistaken a person sitting on the brahma's throne should also rise because the person who is coming in he is much more elevated position is guru guru is sakshat haritvena so what should get up so like that indra is telling that whoever had written that kind of instruction which because of which following that i was in difficulty and because they don't know the highest dharma i have been put into this condition so like that indra is kind of analyzing is the reason for his own mistake and then trying to come to some solution when that hari krishna ha ah, mataji prabhu ji just like romarshan and balram balram ji Ah, same thing, same thing. Yeah, so Marshan Sutta also said same thing. So I am sitting in the Vyasasan. Uh, so the person sitting in the Vyasasan should not get up. But the person who came is Balram Ji, so I am Bhagwan. So, so in that way, 
even though he is following dharma only but the result is very bayanak yes thank you for that example so then what else indra will analyze tesham kupata teshtranam tesham kupata deshtranam pra patatam tamasi yada patatam tamasi yada yashraddha yashraddha jurvachaste vai ोर्डिंग and so too are those who blindly follow them a stone boat would be unable to float and would sink in the water with its passenger similarly those who mislead people go to hell and their followers go with them those who put faith in the words of fallen souls who point out the wrong path sink round like the person riding in a boat of mad boat made of stone so here the understanding is that so the connected to the previous uh, shloka is in that those who made this kind of statement they actually do not know the highest dharma such kind of counselors are there many and all such kind of people are like a boat made up of stones if the boat is made up of stones so though it is looking very beautiful if the boat is kept in the water and if one person stands in the water how long a person can survive in that water if it is a boat made up of stones so like that the instructions of all such people are like the boat made up of stones and i followed in their instruction that means i boarded that stone boat the stone boat alone can sink into the water if somebody sits on that very easily will sink into it without any problem so like that just as a person in the stone boat sink with the stone boat so the followers sink with a bad instructor so he shows anger towards those who gave instructions to him in this assembly so whoever was given that instruction to me that when a king sitting on the throne he should not get up for anyone who ever comes that is actually not a right understanding of dharma i will uh, he is expressing his anger towards him very much right. so now finally he said that so whatever it is jo ho gaya wo ho gaya now i want to go to my guru and beg for forgiveness immediately so we'll continue ataham amaracharyam ataham amaracharyam agada dishana dvijam agadh dishanam dvijam prasadayishe nishatah prasadayishe nishatah trishna tirshna prasadayishe nishtah shirshna shirshna tacharanam sprusha shirshna tacharanam sprusha king indra said therefore with great frankness and without duplicity i shall now bow my head at the lotus feet of brahaspati the spiritual master of the demigods because he is in the mode of goodness he is fully aware of all knowledge 
and is the best of the Brahmanas. Now I shall touch his lotus feet and offer my obeisances unto him to try to satisfy him. Therefore, I shall please the Guru of the Devatas who possesses deep knowledge by touching my head to his feet with sincerity and without duplicity. This was the resolution made by Indra. I shall go to my Guru and fall flat and touch his feet with my head. Considering what to do in this dangerous situation, he then spoke. Indra then thought for a while himself and spoke like this. Evam chintaya stasya. Evam chintaya stasya. Magono bhagavan gagrahat. Magono bhagavan gagrahat. Brahaspatir gato drishtam. Brahaspatir gato drishtam. Gatim adhyatma mayaya. Gatim adhyatma mayaya. While Indra, the king of the demigods, thought in this way and repented in his own assembly, Brahaspati, the most powerful spiritual master, understood his mind. Thus he became visible to Indra and left home. For Brahaspati was spiritually more powerful than King Indra. While Indra was thinking in this way, Brahaspati, disregarding this, left his house and disappeared by his great power. When Indra condemned himself in the front in the in the assembly, everyone in front of everyone. So Indra said, Now I will go to my Guru's home and fall flat and offer obeisances with my head. And I will solicit his compassion, and his forgiveness, and his mercy, etc. So, but Brahaspati, since he is a well known person, what is going to happen? He knows Indra is about to just started for going towards Brahaspati, and Brahaspati disappeared from there. Just as we mentioned, Brihaspati wanted Indra should learn a serious lesson. So he left, he disappeared. So in that way, the past time is continuing. We'll have a small break, then we'll continue. Just a couple of minutes. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna, devotees are there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. Any questions from any devotees? Hello? No, no, no. Okay. So all of you are following the storyline. See, Indra did not get up. So we may, from one point of view, we may have might have heard many times. So Indra is always uh, uh, does like that only keeps doing all the mistakes like that. But sometimes some mistakes are circumstantial. So because of the confusion, sometimes we may do some mistake. And sometimes the mistakes are uh, apparent. They are not premeditated. So sometimes are circumstantial here. So of course, for Brahaspati there was a seat and everyone sat. So Brahaspati should have come before only. Before the dance performance began, if Brahaspati had come, then Brahaspati might have been they might have been welcomed nicely and he might have been uh, sat nicely. Now performance is going on, everyone is deeply absorbed and somehow uh, Brahaspati came and whoever observed, they kind of got up in their respective places without doing much hue and cry. And Indra did not get up. So one reason is he was proud because of the opulences, because of the position, because of the place he is there, king of the heaven. And other reason is Shastra itself says those who are sitting on the throne do not get up. Do not get up. Whoever comes. So he was in confusion what to do. So somehow or other he has chosen that instruction that he should not get up. So that caused all this problem. So Indra also realized the mistake he had done. And he was thinking himself, I'll go and fall flat at the feet of my Guru and then beg forgiveness from him. But before, by the time he reached the Guru's home, Brahaspati understood that Indra is coming to ask for forgiveness. If he asked, I should, I should give forgiveness, but I don't want that to happen. Indra should learn the hard way. If he does not learn the hard way, and he will again do such kind of mistakes. So in that way, the Brahaspati disappeared. So not caring of Indra, who was thinking in this way, Brahaspati became invisible by his great power, Adhyatma Mayaya. So now, Indra came to the home of Brahaspati and he was searching for Brahaspati. Indra did, could realize Brahaspati really felt bad. And Brahaspati completely disappeared, completely gone away. So now what happened? What is the fate of Indra? So we'll see. Guru Nadigat. Prabhuji, ah. like this must not have been the first time na, that Indra is sitting on the throne and somebody has come. Like, because to, for this confusion to arise, whether uh, to get up or not, because I'm sitting on the throne and mm -hmm. maybe the side of this thing. Like, is this the first time that somebody approached when he's sitting on the throne? Right? Why so much See, if, if it was not Brahaspati, it was somebody else, some other Devata, there is nothing wrong in Indra not getting up. Yeah, right. But now, it seems that is the first time it is happening. Okay. For the first time... Even, that's what I'm saying, na, even the program did not have started, then if Brahaspati came, Indra might have got up. But no program started. Hmm. So, did not get up. Okay. okay. So, something like that. So, it is a circumstance, it is not a premeditated in one sense. It is not that Indra, okay, I will not at all respect my Guru. He did not decide like that. It happened circumstantially. More than that, here he himself is saying that because Shastra says so, we should not get up. The one who is sitting on the throne should not get up. I did not get up. Prabhuji, but then if, when, if, it, if it is circumstantial, then the question of having pride of own wealth doesn't arise. That is also there. See, I am I'm trying to show some positive aspects also. Bhagavatam only clearly says, uh, the very first line of the verse, Sukadeva Goswami says that, Indas Tribhuvana Aishwarya. Indra had got the Aishwarya of the three Bhuvana, three Lokas. As a result of what happened? Mada. He became proud. 
uh, because he became proud what did you do ullangita satpataha whatever is the satpata he overstepped it ullangita satpataha So he, he, he transgressed the right conduct. So from Sukadeva Goswami's point of view, he has taken this as seriously. So what? You might have so many appliances, you might be the king of the three bonas, but when Guru comes, he should show respect. Hmm. Sukadeva Goswami is a person from Vairagya lineage. You can have all the opulences, but you should not be attached to it. Sukadeva Goswami is not against having something. But Sukadeva Goswami is very much against if somebody is attached to one's opulences. He strongly speaks such kind of things in the Bhagavatam. Whenever such kind of things are mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Because Sukadeva Goswami is a Vairagya person said. Mm. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh. Prabhuji, that, that is only the right perception. Or there is the question of having any other perception. Because it is it is obvious now that even if you're a king or somebody, even guru comes, you have to give get up and give respect. Like if you see Krishna's pastimes also, uh, when he was in Dwarka, when Narad Muni would come, he would get up, not just get up from his throne, he would make Narad Muni sit on the throne, wash his feet. So if Krishna can do so, where is the question of Indra not doing it? I mean, if he is not doing it, it is definitely see, see, a both, both you, you cannot compare both. For Narad Muni visiting Krishna's home, these hmm. two people are from different places. Narada Muni yeah. is a special guest visiting Krishna's home once in a while. But both yeah. Brahaspati and Indra are living in the same place as a next door person. They see each other regularly every day, morning to evening, again and again, again and again. Is it mentioned that they meet again and again like that? Obviously, na, both of them are living in the same place only. Indra is living in Amaravati, Brahaspati living in the Brahaspati, that Jupiter, in the heaven only. They would, they would meet. Again and again means at least they would meet every day regularly. Every day, as, uh, every day when there is a Sabha in the royal assembly, everyone will be there in the trial Sabha. And he was given a prime seat in the trial Sabha always. That seat is meant for him. He is not only the priest, he also can be like my prime minister of the entire uh, Heavenly Sabha. Mm -hmm. If you had seen some old movies, you can remember that there is a royal assembly, the king is there, the ministers are there, the, the commander in chief is there, and all others are there. Then there is discussion mm. in the royal court. Sometimes there is a dance performance happening in the royal assembly. You can you can visualize that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe I don't know. I'm still it is not it is I'm not able to understand or digest probably the right word that uh, your guru comes and you just don't get up. That's something. Anyway. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Ah, Prabhuji, in some lecture we had heard that uh, if you are very close, if you stay remain very close to your spiritual master, sometimes you take mm. uh, out of familiarity, you take your spiritual master to be an ordinary person. Yeah, familiarity Maybe breeds contempt. That's what yeah, that is true. Mm. With Indra, it's yes. seeing the spiritual yes. master every day. Mm. He just took him for granted that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Even in one sense, though we may be calling him as spiritual master, of course, he is a spiritual master, but he is more on the side of uh, the family priest, the guide, mentor, and minister, etc. Is uh, like uh, how did the Pandavas treat uh, Dronacharya? Do they treat him as the 
guru who taught them the vedic knowledge and uh, the weaponry or do they treat him like the the guru who teaches them bhakti are you getting if the same pandavas yes. are supposed to receive narada muni the personalities like narada muni or some great sages such as brugu muni vasishta how would they receive him and even the for that matter durvas muni who was instead pandavas also how would they receive him and how would they receive dronacharya yes there would be a difference because they were seeing and interacting with dronacharya every day every day mm-hmm. so he is like one of the family members family elders so like that. so some of the points we can show I mean, we can see from this point of view so that so as you mentioned rightly familiarity breeds contempt so there is a seat meant for prospati uh, uh, also and indra might be expected okay he has come late and he, is, he will come and occupy his seat something like that but anyway these are all our kind of uh, speculation and all but from sukadev goswami's point of view the majority the over he gives more weight to this ullangit uh, satpata because of manda which is because of tribhuvana aishwarya because now as i mentioned like the devatas drag the nectar and indra now he thinks that now no one can defeat us no one can uh, move us from the throne of heaven so for the time being now when somebody achieves something uh, uh, which is considered to be one of the highest thing obviously for some time there is a euphoria yes i am that person i am that person so that euphoria makes one commit mistake so that that is what is happening here okay we'll go ahead there is no end to discussion gurur nadigata samyam gurur nadigata samyan parikshan bhagavan swarat parikshan bhagavan swarat dhyayam diya surer yukta dhyayam diya surer yukta sharma nalabhat atmanah sharma nalabhat atmanah although indra searched vigorously with the assistance of the other demigods he could not find brahaspati then indra thought alas my spiritual master has become dissatisfied with me and now i have no means of achieving good fortune although indra was surrounded by demigods he could not find peace of mind searching for a method of finding him by using his intelligence indra surrounded by the devatas was unsuccessful and could not find peace of mind obviously how will he get peace of mind looking in all ways for a method of knowing where brahaspati was he was unsuccessful he was looking every direction he was telling everyone please find out where he is where is he they when they could not find and he don't know where to search for brahaspati you now where he has gone he has no idea because this brahaspati did not tell anybody also that i am going so and so why will tell so indra is worried then tat shrutvai sasura sarva ಆಶ್ರಿತ್ಯಮ ಚಕ್ರೋರ್ ದೇವಾನ್ ಪ್ರತ್ಯುದ್ಯಮನ್ ಚಕ್ರೂರ್ ದುರ್ಮದ ಆತತಾಯಿನ ದುರ್ಮದ ಆತತಾಯಿನ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಿಟಿಯಬಲ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಇಂದ್ರ ದ ಡಿಮನ್ ಫಾಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗುರು ಶುಕ್ರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಕ್ವಿಪ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿತ್ ವೆಪನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ಡ್ ವಾರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಡೆಮಿಗಾಡ್ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂದ್ರಾಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಮನ್ಸ್ following the instructions of their guru shukracharya 
equipped themselves with the weapons and declared war against the devadas the news indra was searching for his guru braspati the news went all the way up to shukracharya and shukracharya told asura this is the right time go and attack indra indra is shelterless so indra can be defeated very quickly there is a past time comes in mahabharat also when the five pandavas and kunti maharani were escaped from the laksha guruha there in duryodhana wanted to burn them alive so while they were going so they were walking whole day it was already late in the evening and night i just approached sandhya ho gaya already night approached and it is becoming dark and the whole day they did not eat anything they did not get anything to eat and somehow they came near to ganga river so the panda kunti was kunti marani was feeling so much thirsty the panda was also feeling so much thirsty they wanted to take some water from ganga and it is said that the ganga was supposed to be used by human beings during the day time and it will be used by gan devatas in the night time was came and they were sporting in the ganga during the night time so when the pandavas were about to take some water from ganga during the night time just about night began the gandharvas became uh, the gandharvas who were playing there became very angry and they began shout at uh, pandavas saying that who are you to come to this ganga is belongs to us how dare you to take ganga's water go get lost then arjuna he became angry who how dare you to say all these things ganga belongs to everyone it is not the property of anybody and we can take water any time and gandharva became uh, pitrata it is named pitrata he became very angry and began to raise weapon and start fighting with uh, arjuna and arjuna also is raised his bow and arrows and started fighting with him and arjuna in no time defeated that chitrarata and arjuna with one astra agni astra so chitrarata had a beautiful chariot chitrarata means a mystical magical chariot so with one astra agni astra arjuna burnt that beautiful chariot or the wonderful chariot to ashes so chitrarata understood hey, these people are not ordinary people then he immediately came and begged for forgiveness and asked for their identity who are you and then they revealed actually we are pandavas we just escaped from the lax laksha guru and we were going uh, for some shelter then chitrata said that no no please forgive me i did not know that you are pandavas so i was just uh, was so much um, imagine enjoyment and for at last temper put all these things please take the water of ganga and please go ahead like that then arjuna asked, that is fine but what was the reason that you for no reason you raised your weapons and uh, tried to shoot at arrows at us why chitrata says that he gives multiple reasons one reason oh, he gives one different reasons from his side and from the side of pandavas so the from his own side he gives the reason that because i am playing with lot of women i want to show off in front of the women that i am so powerful like in chaste is anybody the way i want so it's uh, he wanted to show off himself in front of the ladies that's why for even for role is raised his weapon and started fighting with the panda but other reason he says that second reason currently you do not belong to any ashram so you are identityless so you can be attacked by anybody and everyone you because you are identityless you cannot claim yourself as a kshatriya till now when you are in gurukula you are under the shelter of guru then you are called as brahmachari after marriage you will be called as grahastha but now you are neither brahmachari nor grahastha because you are not under the shelter of a guru you are not brahmachari and you are not married you are a grahastha you are ashramless that means you are identityless you don't uh, you are not supposed to be given the respect as a kshatriya you are like ordinary person now as good as because you are shelterless so you can be attacked by anybody so this is another reason from your side so then the pandavas ask please suggest us so we need to if we want to have a guru whom should i select and we want to get marry whom should we select as our wife then chitrarata uh, tells go to uh, panchal desh and marry drupadaraja's putrika dropati okay just then dropati already appeared so that is there 
and then uh, and he also says that go to nearby in the forest there is dhaumya you accept him as your guru chitrata only told dhaumya to accept their family priest so since then pandavas kept dhaumya along with them till the end of their life as their guru so this is some of the subtle points which are there in the scriptures here and there which have a lot of uh, significance behind that same thing here also because indra is shelterless he can be attacked and he will be defeated easily because he is directionless if guru is there guru will give proper direction if guru is not there he will be directionless and he will be uh, empowermentless if guru is there guru will em- give empowerment so with that one can become successful so when guru himself is displaced with that person and uh, his bhagya will be removed and he will be defeated very easily so asuras being instructed by shukracharya attacked on indra and very easily they defeat indra that is mentioned in the next verses Shubhiji, all this Same. you mentioned is there in the Mahabharata. Ah, uh, yes. All this? Everything okay. is there in the Mahabharata. I am not speculating, but I have heard from mm-hmm. Govind Prabhu everything. Yeah, not about speculation, because Bhagavatam doesn't give all these details. No, no the Bhagavatam focuses on Bhakti. Bhagavatam does not talk about the details. These are all from Mahabharata. Yeah. ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶರಣ ಜಗ್ಮು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶರಣ ಜಗ್ಮು ಸಹೇಂದ್ರಿ yeah when the asuras attacked the devata devata fought for some time but in the main time their bodies were so much injured by the arrows thrown by the asuras they could not tolerate they left the battlefield and they went to brahma ji the devata's head thighs and arms and the other parts of their bodies were injured by the sharp arrows of the demons the devata headed by indra approached lord brahma with bowed heads tam ta ಪರಿಸಾಂತ್ವಯ When the most powerful Lord Brahma saw the demigods coming towards him, their bodies gravely injured by the arrows of the demons, he pacified them by his great causeless mercy and spoke as follows. Seeing the suffering devatas, the most powerful Lord Brahma pacifying them by his great mercy spoke to the devatas as follows. Now Brahma will give a suggestion. you since brospati rejected you so make a different guru temporary guru make vishwarupa as your temporary guru so like that because without guru they cannot do anything much in that way te brahma vacha aho pata sura shreshta te brahma vacha aho pata sura shreshta e ada brahm e अभद्रम ब्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्टम्रह्मिष्
Lord Brahma said, O best of the demigods, unfortunately, because of madness resulting from your material opulence, you failed to receive Brahaspati properly when he came to your assembly. Because he is aware of the Supreme Brahman and fully in control of his senses, he is the best of the Brahmanas. Therefore, it is very astonishing that you have acted imprudently towards him. Paramaji says, O oh, best of the devatas, you have committed a great offense, great wrong. You did not welcome the Brahmana fixed in Brahman. Brahmistam, Brahmanam, Dantam. Brahmana means Braspati. Brahmistam means who is situated in Brahman platform. So he is like a Brahman realized Brahmana. He is not ordinary Brahmana. And having a controlled mind because of your wealth and power, Tantam means he has complete control of the mind. Sama, Dama, Tapas, Taocham, like that. Why? Aishwarya na Abhinandata. Because of Aishwarya, you could not respect your Guru, who is Brahman realized, who is self controlled. And this is Abhinandata. This is not pleasing. What is this? So, like that. You did not disrespect an ordinary person. You instead you disrespected a self realized, self controlled person. क्षिणेभ्या because of your misbehavior towards Brahaspati, you have been defeated by the demons. My dear demigods, since the demons were weak, having been defeated, defeated by, your, by you several times, how else could you, who were so advanced in opulence, be defeated by them? O oh, Devatas, for this evil deed, you who are strong have been defeated by enemies who are weak. You have been defeated by others who are very weak and they are enemies. So basically, just now, sometime back, all of you drank nectar, all of you became so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. But you have been defeated by the weak Devatas who could not even drink any nectar. Why? The reason is not due to your strength. Uh, you, you, not because of the strength, it is because of your mistake that you have done towards your Guru. That mistake took away all the piety, all uh, auspicious from your life. So you have been defeated by the weak Asuras very easily, not after a long fight also. That is all because of the, uh, the removal of the grace from your Guru. So that your guru is so powerful just by his displeasure all of you lost in the battle see like that so then in brahmaji further strongly he says magavan vishata pasha magavan vishata pasha prakshinan guru atikramat Prakshinan Guru Atikramad Samprati Upachitan Bhuya Samprati Upachitan Bhuya Kavyam Aradya Bhaktik Bhaktita Kavyam Aradya Bhaktita Adadiran Adadiran Nilayanam Adadiran Nilayanam Mama pi brugu devata. Mama pi brugu devata. O oh, Indra. O oh, in Amataji, we wait. I'll read. O oh, Indra, look. These enemies who are weak because of offense to Guru have now become strong. The enemies, they are actually weak because you committed offense to your Guru. That offense made you who are strong weak. And they were weak, strong. 
worshipping shukracharya with devotion being devotees to guru they may take away my abode also and these people because they are all saved by shukracharya they have lot of respect for shukracharya as a result of that they even defeat me and take away my satyaloka also that much power they they have received now by the blessings of their guru and which they received by serving their guru in the time of that samudra mantan episode when devatas were defeated devatas defeated uh, asuras so with all the mutilated body the bodily limbs the asuras went to shukracharya shukracharya rejuvenated them and gave them good shiksha and they served shukracharya with grace with uh, gratitude and the shukracharya and other brahmanas became so happy they blessed them profusely as a result of that though they were bodily weak but now they became strong and they could defeat all of you who drank nectar and you all of you became weak because you disrespected your guru brahma ji drawing a parallels between both the parties how are they showing their respect towards their good respect to gurus as a result of that how their uh, uh, fortune has been changed accordingly so like that disrespect to guru is a cause of disaster and respect to guru is a cause of good fortune an example of the demon is given they have so much strength that they can take away my abode also because they have devotion to guru brugu devata they have devotion to their guru the son of brugu muni that is shukracharya so the result of that they, they even can defeat me also like that brahma ji is telling brahma ji is giving that matlab this is how when a guru blesses the disciple can do even this much then what speak of defeating you all like that is like indirectly chastising uh, devatas that see asuras have lot of respect towards guru and they got the blessings of guru and you devatas are supposed to be good cultured and you don't show respect to your guru who is self controlled as well as brahman realized shukracharya may not be so much self controlled and so much brahman realized then how much more respect you should be showing towards your guru so like that that is understand then he further says strongly sri pishtapam kim ganayanta bedya sri pishtam sri pishtam kim ganayanta bedya mantra brugu nam anushikshitartah mantra brugu nam anushikshitartah nave pragovind gavishwaranam navi pragovind gavishwaranam bhavanta badrani nareshwaranam bhavanta badrani nareshwaranam because of their firm determination to follow the instructions of shukracharya his disciples the demons are now unconcerned about the demigods in fact kings or others who have determined faith in the mercy of the brahmanas cows and the supreme personality of godhead krishna and who always worship worship these three are always strong in their position intent and following the instructions of shukracharya and having unbreakable counsel they do not care at all for the devatas there are no misfortune for kings who respect the brahmanas cows and govinda vipra govinda gau ishwara naam bhavanti abhadrani nareshwara naam na abhadrani those people who respect vipras govinda and ga cows for them there is no abhadra so that is that's what in brahma ji saying pacification offering gifts and punishment are obviously not possible so if you want to go and uh, do something with the asuras to regain your swarga if you want to do sama beda dana danda none of these things will work punishment you can't punish they are so powerful offering gifts dana cannot work they they have become the king of the heaven why they what dana you will give them pacification sama saying that okay you are asuras you are not maybe we are devatas you are supposed to be the king of the heaven and all they will not they will care least 
earlier words. Causing dissension among them is also not possible. Beda, if you want to create some disputes among themselves, it is also not possible. Because the reason is, now they are following the instruction of Shukracharya and Shukracharya's counsel is unbreakable. Everyone, all the asuras together following the instruction of Shukracharya. It is not that some of them are having some positive opinion, some of them are negative, not like that. Because every in one sense, everyone was saved by Shukracharya recently. So they obviously will have a lot of respect and gratitude towards Shukracharya. So everyone is following the instruction of Shukracharya without fail. So now you can't do anything, you cannot employ upon them Sama Beda Dana Danda. So like that. They have invisible, the indivisible counsel. The cause of everything is that they have taken the teachings of Shukracharya at their only goal. And you people, you can't even respect your guru, then what to speak of following his instructions. So like that. So indirectly, the Asura is doing all these things and you are Suras, you are supposed to do much more than that. You are not doing the basic thing also. Like that, chastising Brahmaji. Then we will die. Indra says, if that is the case, we will die out of starvation. We don't have anything to eat also. We don't have any shelter to live in. Brahma says, Brahma comfort them. Don't, 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 don't say like that. Nothing, nothing will happen. Those who are merciful to Brahmanas, cows and Govinda have no misfortune. Yeah, yeah. One time out of circumstances, you have made a mistake, but your natural disposition is not a disrespectful behavior towards uh, Brahmanas, cows and Govinda. So, since you temporarily you disrespect, show disrespect to Brahmana and Guru, temporarily you will go through problem. But very soon you will reinstate in your original position. Till then, be patient. So, like that, uh, Brahmaji is telling that. Don't worry. You people will always show respect to Guru, the Brahmana, cows and uh, Govinda. So, there will be no prolonged misfortune for you. So, like that. Then, the last verse spoken by Brahmaji. Brahmaji now says that the good counsel he gives. Since having a good counsel and having a good instructor, the Asuras gained such much power and they were uh, they were able to defeat all of you and they can also defeat me. Brahma Loka also they can occupy. And similarly, if you also have a good, good guru who can, uh, for whom you have great respect and who can give you good counsel, you can also defeat them. Have a guru immediately. And they said, Brahaspati, we don't have Brahaspati ji. He is our guru, but he is disappearing, he is not visible. Then Brahma suggests, you accept Vishwarupa. Vishwarupa also has so much power to help you to regain your kingdom. Tad Vishwarupam Bajata Sudhishpram Arakshna Tad Vishwarupam Bajata Shuvipram Tapasvinam Tvashtram Atatma Vantam Tapasvinam Tvashtram Atatma Vantam Sabhaji Tortam Savidasya Tobo Sabhaji Tortam Savidasya Tebo Siyadik Shemishadvam Utasya Karma Yadik Shemishadvam Utasya Karma Therefore, Dekha. immediately, ah, oh, Mataji, I will read it. Yes. Therefore, immediately worship Vishwarupa, the son of Vashta. A prudent Brahmana of great austerity as your Guru. So, like Brahaspati, there is another powerful Brahmana. He is the son of Svashta. So, Indra's one of uh, younger brother of Indra is Svashta. So, indirectly, uh, Brahmaji is recommending Indra that you go and accept your nephew as your priest and as your Guru. Nephew, nephew go. He is younger brother's son only. Indra Sengar brother is Tvashta, Tvashta's son is R. If not Engar brother, we can say elder brother because Indra discussion will come later. So Tvashta is Indra's elder brother. So you take the shelter of the son of your elder brother. Please, pleased by your worship, he will, fill, he will fulfill your desires. Provided that you tolerate his being partial to the demons. So... Pashta son Vishwarupa can help you to regain your previous position. 
but since his mother is from asura dynasty asura lineage he also has some respect and partiality towards asura if you can tolerate that sashta can the sashta son vishrupa can be your guru and he will help you to regain your original position brahma told everything clearly yeah this is this it all okay. careful <clears throat> therefore this is the immediate solution worship vishrupa as your guru if you can tolerate his being partial to the demons then he will be a correct solution for your current unfortunate situation so like that so brahma clearly mentioned you should tolerate his being partial towards the demons if that thing you can do you are victorious and you will you will remain powerful till the time braspati will come back you can have vishrupa as your guru something like that is been indicated <clears throat> then sukadev goswami comes to the narration yeah brahma gave them instruction now they will go to vishrupa and they request vishrupa to become their guru and vishrupa also says that see but i can become guru but all of you are elder to me how can i become guru for people who are elder to me elder to us then devata say that actually normally for all considerations the age can be considered as a important factor to consider who is elder or younger but in the case of vedic knowledge in the case of the relationship between guru and disciple the knowledge matters whoever has more knowledge more realization he is qualified to become guru the two important qualities of guru is shabde brahmana nishnata shabde nishnata brahmana nishnata shabde nishnata means he is expert in understanding the essence of shastra and brahmana nishnata means he had taken complete shelter of para brahman that person is qualified to become guru so in that way so that that discussion will happen now shri shuka uvacha shri shuka uvacha ta evam udita rajan ta evam udita rajan brahmana vigata jvara brahmana vigata jvara rishim pastram upavrajya rishim pastram upavrajya parishvachedam abruvan parishvachedam abruvan so they go some says that o king thus advised by lord brahma and relieved of their anxiety all the devatas went to sage vishwarupa the son of kashta they embraced him because he is their nephew they embraced him and spoke as follows sri deva uchuhu sri deva uchuhu vayam te titaya prapta vayam te titaya prapta ashramam badramastu te ashramam badramastu te kama sampadayatam tata kama sampadayatam tata pitrunam samayochita pitrunam samayochita now the devotees are speaking to vishrupa having come to him they embraced him and they are speaking oh vishrupa may there be all good fortune for you we the devatas have come to your hermitage as your guests okay please try to fulfill our desires according to the time since we are on the level of your parents when a guest comes the host should respect them uh, in all respects and then offer whatever they want and now we are not only your guests and we are also your elders your, your uncles so you are you are supposed to fulfill our desire all the more so so they are like uh, telling that because when elders are in difficulty the elders should take up the matter and then should, they should solve and they should be the needful and they should assist so and, and we are not only your elders we are also have come as a guest to your ashram so you please take care of us so like that they are telling putranam hi paro dharma putranam hi paro dharma 
पितृशुश्रूष नमसता पेरेंट्स even though son himself got married and he also has children but still his duty towards his parents is to serve them then what to speak of his son who is a brahmachari who is not even married so one may say that i have already married i have my own family i don't have time to serve you but shastra says no in spite of having married in spite of having children for yourself it is your duty to serve your parents If a married person owns as to married person and having children also has to serve the parents, then what to speak of a brahmachari is supposed to serve the parents? Obviously, brahmachari must serve the parents without any question. So therefore, we you are brahmachari and we are all your uncles. We are on the level of your father, your parents. You should serve us without fail. Then they say, Acharyo Brahmano Murti. आचार्यो ब्रह्मणो मूर्ति पिता मूर्ति प्रजापते पिता मूर्ति प्रजापते भ्राता मरुत्पते मूर्ति भ्राता मरुत्पते मूर्ति माता साक्षात क्षिते तनु माता साक्षात क्षिते स्तनु दयाया भगिनी मूर्ति दयाया भगिनी मूर्ति धर्म से आत्मा तिथि ही स्वयं धर्म से आत्मा तिथि ही स्वयं अग्नेर अभ्यागतो मूर्ति ही अग्नेर अभ्यागतो मूर्ति ही सर्वभूतानि चात्मना सर्वभूतानि चात्मना So now he says the shastra according to shastra, these people are considered to be representatives of so and so important people, important things like that. The acharya is the personification of all the Vedas. Acharya should be seen and respected as the personification of all the Vedas. Similarly, a father is personifies Lord Brahma. The Lord Brahma is the supreme prajapati. Father is also prajapati. A brother personifies Indra. Brother is like the Indra because Indra maintains all of us. The elder brother also maintains all of us in the family. A mother personifies the planet Earth. So mother like planet Earth, she is uh, so tolerant and she give everything to the children without expecting anything in return. Mother is compared to mother Earth. And a sister personifies mercy. Sister always shows compassion towards the brothers. She always shows affection, love, and uh, to the brothers. So I like that. Sister is person face mercy. Daya bagini murti. An unexpected guest person face religious principles. Dharma sya, dharma sya atma atiti swayam. So atiti he represents atma dharma. All the religious principles that uh, reveal atma gyan. So in that way. That means when Atiti comes, one should respect the Atiti and do the needful in all respects, because serving Atiti is an important aspect of gaining Atma Gyan. Because serving Atiti will purify one, as a result of that one gains Atma Gyan. In that way, and an invited guest personifies Agni. An uninvited guest personifies Atma Dharma. Atiti is Atma Dharma. अग्नेर अभ्यागतो मूर्ति ही मतलब दो रूटेल दैट आई एम कमिंग होम एंड दे रिप्रेजेंट अग्नि एंड ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज पर्सनिफाई लॉर्ड विष्णु द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सर्वभूता ने चात्मन बिकॉज इन एवरी लिविंग एंटिटीज हार्ट दैट इज परमात्मा सो दे रिप्रेजेंट विष्णु सो दिस इज हाउ ऑल ऑफ अस शुड ट्रीट व्हेन वी इंटरैक्ट विद द पीपल अराउंड अस गुरु टू बी पर्सनिफाइड ऑफ द फॉर्म ऑफ द वेदास Father is Lord Brahma, mother is Bhudevi, elder brother is Indra, 
elder sister as uh, mercy atiti as uh, religious principles and uh, a invited guest are the one who tells already and comes hmm? um they are like agni and all the living things are like vishnu lord vishnu paramatma the acharya one who teaches the vedas personifies the vedas the brother personified indra the uninvited guest personifies dharma then what to speak of us so devata is saying that then what to speak of us even if mother father these that these people represents so and so then we are everything to you we are like your uh, father we are like your uncle we are like your elder brother we are like this we are like that we are everything for you so you should be able to do everything to us all beings personify the supreme lord enough of praise and instructions on dharma please say what do you want so should be vishwarupai saying that my dear uncles thank you thank you for giving me all this knowledge but what do you want what 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 seva you are expecting from me how can i serve you please tell me so he is asking that so now the devatas will tell what exactly they want from vishwarupa hari krishna all of you are able to follow any questions no no question no problem so now tasmat pitrunam artanam tasmat pitrunam artanam artim paraparabhavam artim paraparabhavam tapasa pananayam sata tapasa pananayam sata sandesham kartum arhasi sandesham kartum arhasi o son you should follow our order and take away the distress of your parents who have been painfully defeated you should follow our order and take away the distress of your parents who have been painfully defeated so they are telling what they want we have been defeated by asuras very uh, badly and you should help us regain our kingdom vrini mahe vrini mahe sopadyayam vini vrini mahe tvopadhyayam brahmishtam brahmanam gurum brahmishtam brahmanam gurum yatanjasa vijeshyama yatanjas yatanjasa vijeshyama tapat naam stavate jasa tapat naam stavate jasa we select you a brahmana fixed in brahman just like brahmaspati was also a brahmana fixed in brahman you are also a brahmana fixed in brahman brahmishtam brahmanam as our guru and a teacher as our guru so that we will be able to easily defeat our enemies by your power we chose you as our guru they said the reason how why you want to make me your guru but how will you worship me who am anger being a son of your brother so when they said we want to select you as our guru but how can now how, how can you do that i am the son of your brother i am your nephew how can you worship me guru means should be worship then they say that age is not the subject matter in the matter in the matter of spiritual guru and disciple relationship the knowledge is the matter like that na garhyanti hi arteshu na garhyan na garhyanti arteshu yavishtangri abivadanam yavishtangri abivadanam chando bhyo anyatra na brahman chando bhyo anyatra na brahman vayo jaishta yashva karanam vayo jaishtasya karanam 
the demigods continued do not fear criticism for being younger than us such etiquettes does not apply in regard to vedic mantras except in relationship to vedic mantras seniority is determined by age but one may offer respectful obeisances even to a younger person who is advanced in chanting vedic mantras therefore although you are junior in relationship to us you may become our priest without hesitation o brahmana the wise do not criticize a junior in age for fulfilling one's purposes the cause of seniority is age except in the case of vedic knowledge the wise do not criticize worshiping the feet of younger person the cause of being senior and junior is greater He is greater age and younger age for activities other than Vedic knowledge. Other than in Vedic subject matter remaining all, but respect should be shown according to one's age, elder and younger. But in the activities related to the Vedas, that is not so. The cause of seniority of knowledge of the Vedas, the cause of seniority is the knowledge of the Vedas. Therefore, because you have greater knowledge of the Vedas, you should be our guru, our priest and our guru who gives mantra to us. because you are better situated as a brahmishta you can become our guru and you can take care of us so like that our uh, devadas are asking and this is the last verse for today and tomorrow in the next class we will discuss what vishurupa replied to them shri rishi uvacha shri rishi uvacha abhyartita suragunai suraganai abhyartita suraganai पौरहित्ये महातपा पौरहित्ये महातपा सा विश्वरूपस्थान आहा स विश्वरूपस्थान आहा प्रसन्ना लक्षणया गिरा प्रसन्ना लक्षणया गिरा सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेड व्हेन ऑल द देवताज रिक्वेस्टेड द ग्रेट विश्वरूपा टू बी देयर प्रीस्ट विश्वरूपा हु वाज एडवांस्ड इन ऑस्टेरिटीज एंड वाज प्लीज्ड विद देम talk to them with sweet words so vishrupa will respond and his response we will see in the next class so with these few words we will conclude for today adekshna grantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hilo propad ki jai ananta koti vaishnava bhakta ki jai thank you sir thank you very much thank you you have time uh, like i just wanted whatever i what on whatsapp whatever queries i had same two points i just wanted this if you have time ah uh, just tell me quickly like prabhu ji you had mentioned na uh, that uh, uh, in the material world we give a designation to the soul based on the body in which it is living at that time and in mm. the womb it is called as a pinda or jantu so just uh-huh. after death preta in the uh-huh. hell yatana deha like i didn't quite understand like in the uh, womb of a uh, next mother he is pinda or jantu so uh-huh. uh, like then who is term as preta prabhu ji like when he when he is outside the body means he has not uh-huh. been placed in the womb of a next mother that time he is uh-huh. called as preta no no He just now he left his body, and before he reached the Yamaloka, the in-between state one is called Preta. Whether it is Yamaloka, whether it is Sargaloka, or whether it is the womb of some other mother, before reaching the next destination, the intermediate state it is called Preta. But that means that that time the soul is called as Preta, or soul with, along with the subtle body is called as Preta. Soul along with the subtle body is called Preta. Soul has no identity. Soul gets identity based on the body in which the soul is residing. Okay, so the combination of soul and subtle body is termed as preta before it, its ah, next destiny. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Hari Krishna Prabhu ji. Ah yes, ma'am. But Prabhu ji, it is said that in the first ten days after death, a new body develops hmm. around the subtle body. Ah. So that is the preet, na? No, no. Subtle body is already there. Upon the subtle body, there is a new gross body is developed. Yeah, a, a gross body. Gross body. On the subtle body ah. and the soul, a new body ah. develops. 
So that is and the with preti. that body, even that is also called preta. Yes, that is also called preta sharira. With that, at least from normal condition, uh, on the twelfth day when we offer the final pinda, hmm. so because every day is small small pinda is offered as a result of that they are gaining the body. And twelfth day when the final pinda is offered, then the son says, "You please go. I will take care. No problem. I'll so take care of the family." Pinda? So what does that pinda represent? Pinda means a body. See, this uh, Vedic aphorism is always there, na? Yesya ande tasya yesya pinde tasya brahmande. Hmm. What is there in the brahmande? Is there in the pinda? Even a normal understanding also, people say that this is pinda. This body is called pinda. This body made up of twenty-four hundred elements is called pinda in one sense. But but this this body has a certain identity. Now currently we are called this as human body. So we cannot call this a pinda. Even that mm-hmm. particular body which has no particular identity, no name is given. In that condition, it's called pinda. Okay. So before going to hell, after going to hell, they will get a hellish body. They they will get a hellish identity. If they go to heaven, they will get a heavenly body and a heavenly identity. But they are all pindas. Uh, Ah uh, no no. After going there, they will get a new identity. But before right. going there, before getting a new identity, they are called pinda. They are they, they are called uh, preta. And when they enter into the mother's womb, in the mother's womb, the new gross body is slowly developing. It has uh, that is that state is called pinda. When it has no designation, it is a pinda. No no, yeah. When it has no designation before birth, it is called pinda. When there is no designation after death, it is called preta. Okay. Mm. Of course, if a child is in the human mother, we know the designation is there. So this is a boy or girl. It is a human child certainly. In one sense, designation is there, but still, in that particular state, it is called pinda because the body is growing there. It is growing. That's why it is called pinda. Okay, so okay. that is what the when the priests say that pinda dan karna hai means you have to give up uh, some designated body to the preet uh, form uh, to the pinda form. dan karna matlab ya yeah, then now currently it is in preet state state you uh, are by offering pinda they will very soon enter into the womb of a new mother and then their new body will be developed they are delivered from the current state and enter into the womb of, womb of a new mother that is the reason we offer pinda dan. So, Prabhuji, when pindadan is done, the priest assign particular form of body, or it is general any body. Let that soul go get like that. It is done. It is in general. It is not like that. Okay. Yeah, there could yeah. be some procedure also. There may be some procedure also to offer them particular body also, but in general. At least to get some higher form of life means ah, whatever richer, be richer. possible that kind ah. of thing. yeah yes yes yeah and Prabhuji, you had mentioned that Daksha cursing uh, the moon god it is not his foolishness but his fatherly nature like that you mentioned so like I mm. didn't quite understand that what kind of a fatherly nature means father will look for the betterment of the children now Prabhuji. like. It is for one daughter's sake that Rohini. See, it's, it's, wait, daughters. wait, wait. You have four children. You have four children. Okay. And one child suddenly comes and complains about other child. Even though mistake may be this child only. This child only made a mistake and the other child beaten him and this child comes and complains. What the mother will do? Immediately. For the other children. Ah, uh, why? She will ask why you did like that. No, no, she will not ask. Because this child is suffering, she immediately takes action to pacify this child. Then afterwards she will ask the reason. That is the reason. That is the nature of affection. Oh, that that means it was out of impulse. Of. Not exactly out of impulse; it is out of love. Okay. 
सेम but for him when the, when a daughter comes and says that see my my husband is not at all showing any uh, love for me he is always uh, uh, staying away from me something like that so since he is he is so much uh, what do you say since he is so much beautiful that's why he thought he is so special and he can do whatever he wants i will curse him to lose all his beauty hmm. so it's like that okay one and one last of thing of course probably. in one sense it is out of impulsive nature only we can say but more than that it is out of love it is a love but not like a, what you can say is not so much considered okay whether i can do this i can do that but he like fast speaking sharp spoken we bolte na sharp tongue bolte na buch He speaks like uh, instantly, and then he feels bad. I should not have spoken spoken like this. It's a tamasic love, Prabhu. Not like that. Love is love. It's a tamasic. Ah yes, ma. Ah, uh, what is the right question? Time yeah, again. Yeah, one last. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that Brahma did not create. Instead, seeing their temperament, he assigned them as human beings instead as the devas. Ah. Means they were sons God... of Arya, ma na. Ah. हाँ को ब्रह्मा कैसे क्रिएट करते हैं ओह ओके दे दे ऑलरेडी बोर्न टू एंड टोल्ड देम यू 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 हैव द लाइक दैट ऑफ ह्यूमन ह्यूमन बीइंग्स बीइंग्स बिकम इवन दे वर देवता संस ओके बिकॉज़ देयर नेचर वाज लाइक ऑफ ह्यूमन देवतास बॉडी इज़ आल्सो लाइक आवर बॉडीज़ ओनली द बॉडी लिस्ट एक्चुअली सेम ओनली उसमें क्या डिफरेंस ओके ओके अंडरस्टूड या थैंक यू ब्रो अरे कृष्णा अंतर्राष्ट्रीय मतभागों तम की जय श्री लक्ष्मी